been posting a lot more video and all sorts of fun stuff on Twitter, twitter.com slash stewdoesamerica. If you're watching on YouTube, well, we post stuff there too, like this video right now. Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, do all the things. We like when you do the things. Glenn Beck is here, and there is a non-zero chance that he may announce himself as an alien being. You have to stay tuned to find out. Joe Biden polls really aren't the only thing falling for Democrats. I've got the latest on Dianne Feinstein for you. It's mean. But we start by doing the state of the 20, 20, 2024 race, part two. Part duh. Part duh. Here we are, uh, two weeks away from the first debate. Two weeks away from tonight. Now, you should know that we're going to be doing big coverage here in two weeks uh, on tonight's program. Actually, we're going to be probably preempted, but we're going to be having uh, all sorts of coverage for the actual um, Blaze TV coverage and uh, Blaze TV YouTube, where you can see us uh, cover the the debates unlike anyone else. And we will have extra coverage on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash America. Make sure to go there. Maybe we'll put it on Twitter too. Uh, Twitter as well. Uh, check those things out and subscribe now so you don't miss out on it. There's a little bell for YouTube. You click that, you're not going to miss it. It'll alert you when we go live. And you don't want to miss that because we're going to be talking a lot and going deeper, I think, than, than most other places will, certainly in a way that other places will not. Um, and I wanted to give you kind of a state of the race. Where are we right now? We're going to be doing these updates throughout the election season. We've got, let's see, four or five months, six months maybe of, of uh, you know, primary stuff ahead of us. It's going to be a long road. This starts, of course, in January, but goes on and on. We'll have all these debates and everything. And it's important, I think, to set some markers as to where we are, when we are. And the way we've been trying to do this this time is to kind of give you a tier list. Uh, tiers of candidates, because you can rank all the candidates all you want, but you know, then you're kind of just, you're measuring differences that aren't really there, honestly. So instead of doing like a power ranking thing, we're going to doing a tier list. And we're going to start with tier five. Now, uh, tier five, we kind of have these categorized by percentage chance. Um, tier five, really you have basically no chance. What I like to say is you have a 0.1% chance or less of anyone in this tier coming out and actually being the nominee. So these guys are real, real, real long shots. And we start with Larry Elder. Now, Larry Elder, let me give you the, the, the argument for Larry Elder here. Larry Elder is a pretty good conservative speaker. He's a, an excellent communicator, been doing a talk show for a million years, knows conservative principles, knows conservative values, did pretty well, basically won the, if, you want, if you'd like to say, the primary of the California gubernatorial campaign, had a shot, was pretty close to Gavin Newsom in the recall election back, what was it, last year, didn't wind up pulling that one off. And honestly, like, it's been surprising he hasn't made really any noise in the presidential uh, race so far. He really needs to get on the debate stage. Now, if he gets on the debate stage, he's going to be pretty impressive on the debate stage. Larry Elder is no slouch when it comes to communicating, especially to conservatives. This guy knows his audience. He knows how to talk to conservatives. And I think would be seen as the type of candidate that could make a little bit of a dent, but he's got to get onto, these, onto this debate stage. Right now, he's not close to being on the debate stage. He's not qualifying in polls and not and on donors uh, as well. So we will see if he can put that together for a later debate, but he's got a very big uphill road. Next up, Asa Hutchinson. If you watched our Iowa uh, town hall that we did here on Blaze TV. Probably saw Asa Hutchinson, whatever hope he had of becoming a top tier or mid tier candidate, seemed to go up in flames. He did not handle the interview well. And honestly, like, I don't even know what the argument is. You've got, I mean, you might as well be running Trent Lott for president. It just doesn't seem like it's the, what era is this? He has no connection to the base. And while, you know, he, is an accomplished enough person to be running in this race. It's just not going to happen for Asa this time, I don't think. Uh, Doug Burgum. Yes, Burgum Manium is here. What's the argument for Doug Burgum? Well, again, if you're going to take someone out of this Tier 5 situation, if you want to pick one person who has a chance, you might just pick Doug Burgum. Why? A couple of things. Nobody knows who he is, so he is coming in completely fresh. It's like you've got a brand new prospect coming up to your favorite team. Is he going to be the greatest player of all time? Will he be John, or excuse me, Davis Schneider of the Toronto Blue Jays, who put up three of the greatest games in Major League history for his first three games last weekend of the Boston Red Sox? I was there. I saw it happen. It was incredible. 
Is he going to be Davis Schneider? Maybe he will be. Maybe he'll be so impressive when he gets in front of you for the first time that he'll win you over. Now, a lot of these, we know what Asa Hutchinson is like. He's not going to do that. Maybe Doug Burgum is some ma magical con uh, communicator. Obviously, people in North Dakota seem to like him a decent amount. The larger part here, though, is that he's got a lot of money. He's, he's a self-funding candidate. He could throw millions and millions of dollars at this race, and he is. He's throwing tons of money at this race. He's running ads in these early states. He's trying to make a dent. So if you want to make an argument for someone in this Tier 5, you might just pick Doug Burgamania. Next up, Will Hurd. Will Hurd is a former Republican congressman, uh, one of uh, two African-Americans in this race. Uh, he is running as a moderate, um, and it, it's important. To under he's running a very anti-Trump campaign. Now, I don't need to be the one to tell you that running a big-time anti-Trump campaign in the Republican primary is not exactly the greatest game theory decision, right? Now, Will Hurd might believe all these things, and, you know, whatever, more power to him. Uh, but he's running a little bit different, like... It's not just an anti-Trump campaign. He's running a very moderate campaign, and also it's a different pocket than you'd say someone like Chris Christie is doing. We also know Christie, of course, is running an anti-Trump campaign. This is more of a Liz Cheney campaign, okay? Someone who is, but, you know, Hurd is nowhere near as conservative as Liz Cheney is, and I know that sounds very strange to say these days, but Cheney's voting record, at least, was pretty conservative. Hurd's voting record isn't even conservative, and he's running in a race where there's already a higher-profile anti-Trump candidate, there's just no room here for Hurd, and he has, I would, I would argue, zero chance, but I'm putting him in the anyone from this tier has a 0.1% chance to win the nomination. And finally, uh, Francis Suarez. Uh, you might not know who Francis Suarez is. He's the mayor of Miami. Now, I think the play here from Francis Suarez is to build a, a brand and build some um, notoriety for himself. I don't think necessarily he believes he's going to be president of the United States. There's probably a thought in the back of his head, hey, could I score a VP gig? Maybe. Um, and also, I think he's looking at someone like Mayor Pete from last time, who ran a city that was much, much smaller and had, you know, far fewer accomplishments than Suarez does, who has a, you know, I mean, Miami's a vibrant city right now under his leadership. And, you know, you can see he's young, he's got a good looking dude, he's got a nice looking family. You can see that there's something there. Though, again, when, when the governor of the state of Florida is already on the ballot, uh, y y y and, you know, y he's not, what is he, the fifth you know, most prominent Republican in the state, uh, probably at the high end. So it's a tough sell for Suarez. But this is something I think about building uh, towards something in the future, whether it's a, you know, a higher profile role or maybe a future run later on. Uh, he's in a tier five. Again, look at this, look at this tier five one more time. These are the five people. Again, it's uh, Elder, Hutchinson, Burgum, Hurd, and Suarez. All their c chances combined about 0.1%. If you're going to pick one out of this, you probably go with Burgum, just because, it, I mean, you could also argue Elder if he could get on the debate stage, but man, he's not, he's not having luck with that so far. All right, let's go to the next tier. Next tier is tier four. We say the people in this tier have combined about a 1% chance of getting the nomination. And we start with Chris Christie. We just talked about him a second ago. Obviously, he's an anti-Trump candidate. Unlike Will Hurd, he's pretty good at arguing these points though he has tons and tons of problems in his past. I mean, you, you go back, it's funny, you look at this and like, he's trying to argue that Donald Trump should go to prison. Well, you know, kind of at the same time, one of the example cases as to why fraud will not apply to Donald Trump is the Bridgegate case, which very much had to do with Chris Christie, who, you know, uh, closed the bridge lanes to punish a political opponent. And in that one, they like really caught his underlings, at least, talking about doing this to punish his political opponents. There's far more evidence there than the case that Christie is currently arguing for against Donald Trump. None of this makes any sense. Chris Christie is obviously in it for other reasons. He's going to get on MSNBC a lot. He's going to raise a bunch of money. Blah, 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 blah. We know that. All right, next. But again, not much of a chance. This is kind of a surprise, and it's a little unfair, to be fair. Our next person in Tier 4 is Mike Pence. And I just... Look, Mike Pence still has better polls than most of these candidates, okay? Even candidates that are above him in this tier arrangement. Um, but I just can't get over how he's just not connecting. Now, he is going to get into the debates, and that's, that's big. But, like, I can't get over, I'm not surprised that he's not connecting, but I can't get over how little of success that he's having, for example, in Iowa, where he's at 3% of the vote. 
you know, Iowa should be very f friendly territory to a guy like Mike Pence, who's talking about faith issues more often. He's, a, you know, sort of a traditional social conservative. You'd think he'd be able to connect a little bit with this audience. It does not seem to be happening. It took him a long time to qualify for this first debate. And honestly, his performance in interviews, uh, the, the event that we did, he's not a great debater anyway. I just don't see this is going to happen. We've put, moved him down to uh, tier four, though I will say his polling is better than tier four. Tier three is the next group, and we start with Vivek Ramaswamy, who moves up from tier four last time to tier three. We say the people in tier three have about a 5% chance combined to win the presidency. Uh, Ramaswamy has had some good polls. Uh, he has, you've seen him near double digits in some of these states. You've seen some good polls where he's approaching double digits even nationally. Vivek Ramaswamy, a very good communicator. I mean, there's definitely people who have call him out as inauthentic and they don't like, uh, they feel like he's just like searching around for issues, whatever the issue of the day is, he kind of takes a position that's a little bit more bold than everybody else on that position. And some people are going to like that. I mean, I think he did a really good job in the, um, uh, the, the uh, forum that we pulled, uh, we pulled off in, uh, in Iowa. And he's a good communicator. He's a good candidate. He's young. He's got a good energy. He's running all over the place. He's campaigning hard in these early states. To his credit, uh, you know, he's trying, he's doing what he can to win this race. Not everyone on this list is doing that. Uh, and Vivek Ramaswamy is. Another advantage for him is he's got some money. You know, he's, he doesn't have to worry about every dime coming in. He's also qualified for the debate. Uh, next up, Nikki Haley. Uh, Haley, again, has not popped in any real way. I thought she did a decent job in our forum. I don't think, you know, she's middle of the pack there. And she kind of sits in the middle of the pack. She's a serious candidate. She has some serious qualifications. Uh, she, but she has not really, she kind of represents a Republican Party that doesn't seem to be hanging around all that often right now. You look at some of her polls, she's c consistently around the 4% area uh, nationally. She has some fans, she has some supporters. She doesn't typically get laughed out of a room. You know, she's not like, you know, Asa Hutchinson here. Uh, but, you know, the uphill battle is there. She is the most prominent uh, female candidate. In fact, I guess the only female candidate that we have on this list. Uh, so there's something there. If you care about uh, such things, uh, you know, I don't care about your genitals. You know, you really can have any, any, either either pair is fine with me. It doesn't really matter on that front. Um, but uh, Nikki Haley is a tier three candidate. And the other one in tier three is going to be Tim Scott. Now, Scott is probably the, I don't know, I mean, Ramaswamy's done well. But I think if you're going to say who you're going to favor out of this realm, you might pick Tim Scott. He's shown some solid polls in early states. Uh, Scott is, uh, is probably... I mean, he's averaging about 10% in Iowa, which is big. If you win Iowa, obviously you're a top contender no matter what you do in the other states. At least you're going to be in the conversation. He's at about 10% there. Um, he is typically, uh, you know, not doing that great nationally, still really around 3%. There's not a lot of name recognition with Tim Scott yet. Um, the, he is also, though, third in New Hampshire. Now, think about this for a second. He's third in uh, Iowa, third in New Hampshire, if you're going to paint a path for someone other than the top two to get to the presidency, well, he's in a decent position to surprise maybe in Iowa and have himself vaulted in uh, North Carolina. And then the third state is his. It's South Carolina. So there is an argument. There is a path for Tim Scott. It's not crazy. Um, I say if you're going to put him, you, you, it's not insane to even put him into your two. I'm not going to do that here. But, it, it, you know, if you want to pick one candidate out of tier three, that has a, uh, is, I think, ahead of the other two here. You, you'd probably go with Tim Scott. Let's go to tier two. No surprises here at the top. Tier two is Ron DeSantis. One thing I will say about the DeSantis situation, he's had all sorts of problems. He's now uh, picked a new campaign manager over the past couple of days. The campaign hasn't gone swimmingly uh, for DeSantis. I think he pictured something better. I don't think he pictured being ahead of Donald Trump right now. But I do think he pictured being closer than he is. Some of these polls show him. I mean, the national polls have him down by 38 points, a little bit less, 27 in Iowa and 24 in New Hampshire. What I will say is the threat as of a few weeks ago was will Ron DeSantis's campaign collapse? Will he drop out of tier two? Will someone like Ramaswamy or Scott or Haley or Pence step up and take over that top challenger to Donald Trump? And look, We've just seen no real signs of that. There have been a couple polls that have been close, but I mean, I'm looking at this. You see, there's a poll where Ramaswamy came within two nationally. Since then, 
DeSantis has led him by 10, 12, 15, 6, and 12. Uh, this, the, he has been stable at about 20% for months and months and months. Now, that's not what you want. That doesn't mean you win. But it is something that you could say, okay, he's had a couple of threats from uh, candidates that are below him and has not given up that second position. He's been steady. We're still too early for that to really mean anything. He's got to do a good job on the debate stage. He's got to either beat up on Gavin Newsom in a debate, have some viral moments, or really shine in the debate with the other candidates, which we think there's going to be seven. Maybe there might be eight in that debate. So his tier two is Ron DeSantis. And of course, tier one is Donald Trump. I don't need to tell you that. You know he's way ahead, as I just mentioned, a 38-point lead nationally. Um, he is over 50% nationally at 54% of the vote. So there is still a significant percentage of his voters. About half of his voters are saying, I would still consider someone else. About half of his voters are locked in to Donald Trump. So this is not an insurmountable thing for uh, you know, someone like DeSantis. But man, this is going to be a tough, tough thing. This is not going to be easy at all. The guy's president of the United States. He's going to be dominating the news cycle. I mean, the guy dominates the news cycle when he orders McDonald's to the White House, right? He, he, of course he's going to dominate the news cycle when he has multiple indictments and trials going on and him going from campaign events to courtrooms. Yes, he's going to dominate the news coverage. And every question that goes to someone like DeSantis or Scott, his questions often are like, what do you think about Donald Trump? And what do you think about what he did? And how do you make gains by just sitting here? Well, let me talk about my competition that's kicking my butt right now constantly. It's a very difficult path to, uh, to forge to be able to knock off someone as famous, as well-known, as well-funded. I mean, again, I talked about Doug Burgum's money. Donald Trump's got more money than Doug Burgum. So this is a very difficult thing for Ron DeSantis or anyone else on this list to do. If you were going to rank him, you'd have Trump one, you'd have DeSantis two, you'd probably have Scott three. And after that, maybe Ramaswamy and then a bunch of other candidates you can reorder uh, any way you want. This is a difficult path for anyone to knock off Donald Trump. And one of the reasons we're talking about this now, because, you know, we might get through a couple of these debates and we might get through Iowa. I mean, if Trump wins Iowa, I don't I don't know. I don't know what the alternatives are going to be. He's going to wind up winning this. Really, someone needs to knock him off in Iowa if someone in the Republican Party wants to make Donald Trump, uh, you know, uh, not the nominee this time. It's just not going to be very, very easy. Very difficult got for everyone else. But that's where we stand right now, two weeks before the first debate on our State of the Race, Part 2. <laughs> If you're anything like me, I have a certain tendency to put things off until the very last minute. And while, you know, sometimes it works out, everything's fine, um, sometimes it does not. And one of the ways it does not is like when you die. If you die, it's hard to reverse. You know those things I should have done last week? Hard to pull them off. When you're dead. I mean, you know, unless you're, you know, Michael Myers in some horror movie, it's going to be difficult to do these things. Now, uh, you've seen these life insurance commercials on TV. You think you'll look into them later. Of course, that's what we all think. I mean, certainly that's what I do. But you can choose life insurance through Ladder today and knock it off your list. Ladder is 100% digital. There's no doctors, no needles, no paperwork. You can apply for $3 million in coverage or less just by answering a few questions about your health in an application. Just need a few minutes and a phone or laptop to apply. Ladder smart algorithms work in real time, so you'll find out if you're instantly approved. No hidden fees. Cancel any time. Get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. What's, what do you got to lose? Ladder's policies are issued by insurers with long, proven histories of pay, paying claims. They're all highly rated. Go to ladderlife.com slash stew. See if you're instantly approved. It's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash stew. Ladderlife.com slash stew. We're now joined by Glenn Beck. Tonight he has a special. This special discusses the biggest story in the history of mankind. I'm going to let him explain exactly what it is. It comes up after this program. Glenn, this is a big evening for the Blaze. Yeah, I will tell you, Stu. I mean, it's just like you to leave out the crucifixion and resurrection of <laughs> Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, hey. uh, as the biggest story of all mankind, which, of course, I pointed out earlier today on radio. <laughs> People um, listen to the radio but, show. Uh, you know that this is not going to work on them, right? I don't know what you're saying, um, but uh, we're having a satellite issue now, Stu. I'm just going to tell you about uh, the program tonight, and I think some people will think that this is um, frivolous or or whatever. It's not. It is truly 
besides the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the biggest story in all of human history, if it is true, and that is uh, we apparently have alien life, we have alien uh, ships, alien technology, aliens either in the full body, you know, uh, form or in goo because they, I don't know, stop too fast and hit the windshield of their UFO. Um, but this comes from multiple sources. And I, I bring on tonight, I think the only guy, well, he's one of a very few uh, people that I would say I would really trust them uh, to investigate something and then uh, come out and uh, uh, with the truth to the best of their ability. Very few people are doing this. And my question to him is going to be, is this a psyop so we are not paying attention to the things we need to is this real um or or is this a combination uh of a psyop and real is this an out and out lie um what 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 exactly are we looking at here because the news that is coming out of of washington is enormous and it has enormous consequences you know it's it's interesting because i think you're right is certainly in the modern era uh, the biggest story of all time would be we actually have alien creatures and alien spaceships in our possession obviously this has been rumored for a long time but i think a lot of people thought you know this isn't you know it, it, maybe it's real but we're never going right. to find out and and so Correct. i kind of i will be honest like when i saw this stuff happen you had testimony on a lot of this stuff I sort of took it as, okay, well, it's probably not true. When it's true, I'll deal with the consequences and actually try to contemplate Correct. what it is. How, why do you believe that it could be true? How good are these sources? Well, I don't even know, Stu, because, I mean, who do you trust? And again, that's one of the points of tonight's show. Who do you trust? Who has enough credibility to tell you some things that may be very important. I mean, some of the testimony is, is that they are announcing themselves to the world governments and to maybe mainly our militaries. And they are saying, we're, we can destroy you, but we're not going to. We're not. Uh, don't fight us because we can destroy you, but that's not our intent. But they are tracking our militaries. They're tracking our missile subs. Uh, they're tracking our missile silos. Um, and letting us know that they know things that we would think are top secret. Um, and the sources on this are really incredible. But now, who do you trust? If that is true, we should be talking about those things and preparing for whatever that might mean. Um, but we're not having that conversation because, honestly, I don't know of a single person that could step up and say, okay, we have alien ships, they're preparing, and they're preparing us for something. They're going to be making... I, I wouldn't believe anybody. Not at this point. I wouldn't believe anybody. Pentagon, intelligence agencies, the Pope? No. What about Will Smith? Would you? Well, Will Smith is a whole different story. You didn't bring... You know, it's like the Jesus thing. You got to bring these things <laughs> right. in right at the beginning, Stu. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, With an exception of maybe Will Smith. <laughs> okay. Um, so when it comes to, like, this being a distraction, I, I go back and forth on this because I think to myself, if, you know, aliens are real and we have them in our possession, it's the biggest story of all time. And I would argue so far... It has been uncovered. It's been undercovered by our media. Like they ha It's been in the news yes. a little bit, but it hasn't been a huge focus. On the other hand, if it's supposed to be a distraction, you think the media would be over-covering it and trying to change people's Correct. focus to that from other important things. So how do you, how do you square that? I, we don't. Um, I, I can't. Um, I, I'm just left with questions uh, on things we we can answer and should discuss and answer together. The president of the United States, no matter who he is, can walk in and say, I want to know about aliens. I want all the information. And there are individuals in the government that outrank security wise, the president. 
So your elected representative as the leader of our country can walk in to a guy you don't even know his name and he can say, I demand this information. And they could say, sorry, sir, but your clearance isn't high enough. You have no need to know. Okay, that's a problem. Who's running the country? You can't have security like that. And we overclassify absolutely everything. Um, and we need to fix who's actually in charge, because that's really the argument that we're having right now. The elites say they're in charge, and you don't need to know these things. And it's not just aliens. It's that we're working on a CB CBDC, a central bank digital currency. They tell you no. They are working on it. Do you have a right to know? Or do they have a right to just do these things in secret? Do you know that that lab that we found in California recently, that Chinese lab, do you know that that received government funding? Yeah, a bunch of government funding. You know that? Hundreds of thousands so, of dollars. Yeah. Um, who's running the country? So is that, the, is that the question to the one criticism I've heard that does have some plausibility to me, which is we, there's no way we have aliens because if we did, Donald Trump would have definitely told us about it. Like, he, there's no way he doesn't tweet that on day three in the Oval Office. Is he, it because I can he, in reality he doesn't know? I can guarantee you there are things, um, and you can read about this, there are things and people that have a higher clearance than the president of the United States this would be one of those things that would fit into that, that they would say to the president, I'm sorry, sir, you do not have a reason to know. I can't release that information. Well, <laughs> where's again, that found in the Constitution, who Glenn? Is, is that, running the world. Is that a thing? Like, is, is there what? Uh, I don't know. I, it doesn't seem like that connects with our system of government at all. It doesn't. You didn't know that? Well, I mean, I've... I could name, I could name, I'm not going to, but I could name the name of one of the former guys. I, and I have friends who know him very well. He was in charge of saying who knows what. And there's somebody doing that job now. And they are the ones that are the, the gatekeeper of all the big secrets. Well... <laughs> We shouldn't have that gatekeeper. For instance, the the Kennedy assassination. What what are they hiding at this point? Yeah. And maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's nothing. But you shouldn't be using nothing to create paranoia or conspiracy theories. At this point, everybody who could have been involved were dead. So the only reason to keep the secret is not because of somebody who is alive, but because of an institution or an organization like the CIA that would be greatly damaged by that information coming out. Well, if that's the truth, we definitely need to know the information, because if they were involved in anything uh, unseemly and unconstitutional, if it's not receiving the disinfectant of sunlight, well, what do you, how bad do you think it is now? And don't answer that, because I think you know how bad it is now. It's very bad. So we, there's a military role of some sort that is delegating, essentially, who gets access to these things. You know the person who was in no, control of it. No, it's an intelligence. 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 Intelligence operation. Yes. Was that person Will Smith? Mm -hmm. It was not Will Smith. Okay. All right. But it was we're, the we're, big-eyed dog well, uh, <laughs> in the movie. Oh, okay. That's who made all the decisions. Uh, this yeah. is going to be fascinating because, yeah. I mean, I, this is one of those areas I don't know that much about, and, and you're going to be uh, getting us very, very deep into this. Uh, you have uh, – is it Michael Schellenberger on with you today uh, on this? He is the guy who I think – I trust people who, uh, for instance, Michael was a guy who was named Time Magazine's – what was it? Defender of the Earth yeah. in 2006 or something like that. And I've known Michael and you've known Michael for a very long time. He was on one of our shows on CNN. He uh, is a big defender of Earth, but he is also uh, one of the bigger skeptics of climate change, what's happening, what the scientists are actually saying, the whole thing on consensus, and of course, all of the solutions. I like people who do not tow the party line all the way along. And he has, he is truly a seeker of truth. Yeah. 
And he's done several reports on this recently. And so I want to ask him, where do you fall on this? You, you have more access than most of us do. You talk to all of the whistleblowers. You talk to the witnesses. Uh, you did research on all of them. Do you believe them? Um, that's, he's going to answer that tonight. That's going to be amazing. Okay, uh, hey, Glenn, two more minutes before we have to go here. You have, uh, we talked on radio a little bit about this today. This, this sort of discussion slash battle slash, I don't know, civil war, some would say, on the right, uh, between people who say, look, we are getting abused by the left all the time. We need to use their own medicine on them. And people who... Uh, you know, want to stay strictly to all of the rules and maybe get rolled over in the process. We, there's a line somewhere in the middle of this, right? How do we find that line as conservatives? So I think it's very simple and uh, it's not going to be an answer a lot of people like. Um, we have every tool at our disposal right now, but it is sitting in an armory that the lock the last time it was opened was maybe 1900 and everybody thinks that it's outdated and those guns won't work and why are we even thinking about that armory right now what's in that armory is the constitution and the declaration of independence and the bill of rights that is every tool we need it is the reason we're in this situation is we locked those things away and said, yeah, yeah, that's from an old age. That, that doesn't matter anymore. I contend that I could take every single story. We should do a show like this. I could take every single story in a day and I could track if it's a problem. I could track how that problem grew because we violated the Bill of Rights or the Constitution. We took a shortcut. We must use those tools and their bazookas. They're not like they're not like, oh, that's a, hang in there, kitty. It's a bazooka and we should be using them. For instance, uh, we talked about it on radio today. Hunter Biden. OK, the federal government's not doing anything. So why are the state attorneys general not uh, prosecuting him in the states where he had cr crimes and criminal activity. He should be going to, uh, to trial in state courts. You know, there we have lost the ability to understand the state's rules over the federal rules. And that's because, and I have to talk about this uh, sometime, maybe next week. Um, the federal government and our Constitution builds a nice layer cake. Uh, and... Uh, don't think that I wasn't hungry when I came up with this. <laughs> a nice layer cake. And everything is layered, and then you have another filling, and then you have another layer, and then some filling, and then another layer, and then some icing on it. And everything is separate. So when you cut into it, you see all those nice layers. We have taken and made the country into a marble cake where you cut in and it's all just messed up inside and, you know, it's chocolate and, and lemon or whatever, and it's all mixed up inside. That was an intentional move. And what they did was our federal government, our, our Constitution says the federal government is this layer. But it's not the lowest layer. The, the ground, uh, the, the foundation of the cake is the people. And then you've got you know another layer and that is the local and state then you have another layer and that one is the federal government and in between those you have things like sheriffs they're not police they're not federal they're not state they answer directly to you and what happened is when they marbleized the cake you now can no longer say well that's the sheriff's job the sheriff if the fbi is coming in then they have to go to the sheriff and say, hey, we're going to do an operation here. We need your permission because it's the sheriff's job as the last line of defense for the people in his county. And he doesn't answer to the feds. But now you used to have like bank robberies. Bank robberies were not federal crimes. Bonnie and Clyde was stopped by the Texas uh, Rangers. Okay? It wasn't a federal crime. Why is the federal government federalizing all of these crimes? Clearly, 
to marbleize the cake, to get in and get their hands in everything the state and the local government should do. We need to know what our Constitution, Bill of Rights and Declaration says, what it means, and reestablish that cake and then use it with all of its power to put the bad people in jail, period. Mm. Now I really want cake, and I appreciate that. Uh, Glenn I Beck. I always want cake. Of course. Yeah. It's always so good. Uh, Glenn Thank Beck, you. You, you heard it in his own words. A show tonight more important than the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, <laughs> it seems sacrilegious to me, but he's got to you know, see if he can live up to it. Are aliens and UFOs a government psyop? Be sure to check in. Uh, it's right after this program. And make sure to watch on your Blaze TV account, blazetv.com slash stew. The promo code is stew. You will save 10 bucks. Glenn, thanks for coming on the show. And pri- try to be a little less sacrilegious. Just next time. Have you heard of the Durban Accords? On August 22nd, BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, are reported to announce perhaps the launch of a new international super currency fully backed by gold and other commodities. Even This has been rumored for a really long time. Seems like it may be coming to fruition. All I know is if it does, you don't want to be on the wrong side of that. And you need to be able to protect yourself, protect your IRA, protect your 401k from the fallout of something like this with gold. You can diversify with gold, uh, with Birch Gold Group. Historically, gold has really been a safe haven in the times of uncertainty that we are facing right now. Get a free info kit on the gold IRA and also uh, how to decide for yourself if a tax-sheltered retirement account backed by physical precious metals is right for you. You can text the word STU to the number 989898 and get this information. It's a monumental shift going on right now. We know this. We know how they're spending. (laughs) We know we're going down a weird road economically. Protect yourself from that. Text STU to the number 989898. It's STU to the number 989898 and claim your free info kit from Birch Gold. Don't worry, Diane Feinstein is okay. Now, not, of course, uh, mentally. Uh, she has completely gone and has been gone for quite a long time. But her fall, she is recovering from and is seemingly okay. She uh, is 90 years old, of course. She is a uh, power of attorney held by one of her children. Uh, but She's still a senator, still voting trillions of dollars through. Uh, That's always good, even though she can't always detect which way she's supposed to vote at the time. You're asking quite a lot. And you might say, well, why aren't you saying anything about Mitch McConnell? Should he also leave the Senate? Yeah. Sure should. If you are in the middle of a statement and you just go... For 40 seconds, yeah. You know, probably shouldn't be in the Senate. Uh, John Fetterman also shouldn't be in the Senate. We should have people who can think clearly in the Senate. We should have people who can communicate basic things in the Senate. What we shouldn't have are the people who are actually in the Senate in the Senate. And this is the problem we've been having for such a long time. I mean, I don't know, somehow Chuck Schumer gets out of all this. I don't understand it. He's just as old as the rest of them. But at least he's able to get through sentences. Um, there is a, a line here. It's not a, an age line per se, though. I mean, I know a lot of people are talking about age limits at this point as this problem continues to get worse and worse and worse and worse. But uh, there you go. By the way, also, we have a, a new poll uh, about leaders that America's lo- Americans love and that Americans Hate, who are some of the, this is the one that uh, Glenn was on several years ago when he was the, the second most beloved creature, feature, well, creature maybe, uh, in, uh, in society, like behind only the Pope. But right now you have uh, uh, th- Prince William is a plus 37 on, on the popularity. I'm surprised at that one. I, I kind of thought people were sick of that shtick already. President Zelensky is a plus 28. Chief Justice Roberts, a plus 13. By the way, the Zelensky thing, you wonder why sometimes these politicians are saying this stuff about Zelensky and you're like, how can you be bringing this stuff up? Are you crazy? He's still an overwhelmingly popular figure, uh, even though on the right, his it's not quite as much anymore. Uh, Jill Biden is a plus 11. King Charles, a plus 9. Hakeem Jeffries, a nice fat zero, which is exactly how I think of him. A giant zilch. Uh, In the uh, negative category, you have Clarence Thomas is a minus three. Attorney General Garland is a minus three. Kevin McCarthy, a minus seven. Donald Trump, a minus 14. Who's more than Donald Trump? Kamala Harris, minus 15. Joe Biden, minus 16. (laughs) Is that is that how he's covered in the news? Is that how is, is that is that actuality reflected in any way in the way the media treats these people? It's incredible. Imagine what they would be if they treated them, if they actually covered these guys equally. 
I mean, Trump will be 20 points ahead. Uh, Mike Pence is a minus 17. And Vladimir Putin, you know, is polling not so strong these days, a minus 85. One of the biggest things people o- overlook when they think about their sleep is their temperature. And people think about the bedding, they think about you know, their pillows or whatever, but they don't think about the temperature. And that's why you gotta check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Uh, they have silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA. Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and they're designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. These are sheets that are infused with silver, prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. They are really comfortable. You're gonna like them a lot, but also, you're going to stay nice and cool if you, you know, you're not going to go either direction too much because you can't go either way. You got to have a little bit of warmth, but not too much. And it's not going to overwhelm you. And then you wake up sweaty in the middle of the night. Nobody wants that. Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you aren't satisfied, send them back. I don't think you're going to do that though. Go to trymiracle.com slash stew, trymiracle.com slash stew. Get Miracle made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for someone else, If you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code STEW at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Do that, of course. Head to trymiracle.com slash stew. Uh, Treat yourself with Miracle Made bed sheets. Parents have almost almost forgotten what the role of a parent is. Amen. It's like, okay, if your little boy comes to you and says, Daddy, I want to be a girl, and you just let him rock with that, you just let Right. He's five. Right. And where did he get that if from? If you let this five-year-old boy decide to eat candy all day, he's going to do that. Exactly. Like, when, when did it become a good idea to let a five-year-old, let a six-year-old, let a 12-year-old make a life-changing decision for themselves? No oh. issue with, with the LBG. I have no problem with, none of you, with nobody. Okay? Right. Love who you love. Do what you do. Exactly. I just personally come from an era where a man was a man and a woman was a woman, and it wasn't but two genders, and that's just how I rocked. Me now, too. It, 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 you, could, you could identify as a goldfish if you feel like. Right. <laughs> I, I agree. Care. That ain't my business. It's just, it becomes my business when you try to make me play the game with you. I'm not going right. to call you a goldfish, but exactly. you want to be a goldfish, you go be a goldfish. I mean, how do you, how do you disagree with that? I mean, it's 100% true. Uh, anyway, Neo, of course, is the singer you're seeing there. And, of course, if you don't, you might not be up on the Neo uh, stuff. But uh, he's, of course, the author, uh, singer, uh, with So Sick, Closer. Miss Independent, Because of You, Sexy Love, Mad, and Let Me Love You, among other songs that I could all continue to recite if you needed me to. The point being that he made these comments, and of course he, the people tried to cancel him. He came out with this weird sort of like PR apology, I apologize for the comments that I made, blah, 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 blah. He then clarified, that was basically his, uh, you know, his management. Uh, here's what he says, he says, look, um, you know, if I offended someone, sure, I, I apologize for you being offended, but, you know, my, that wasn't my intention. But I am absolutely entitled to feel how I feel, and, and you're entitled to feel how you feel. Someone asked my opinion on the matter, and this is how I feel. I will never be okay with allowing a child to, uh, to make a choice that is detrimental to their life. Anyway, he goes on, if I get canceled for this, then you know what? Maybe this is a world where they don't need a Neo no more. And that's how I feel. Like, I, I keep blabbing my stuff. If I get canceled for it, maybe you don't need a stew. I mean, I'm not that important. The world will move on, and I will as well. Hi. That's me authentically drinking from my anyone but Biden 24 mug. You can get one at studosmerch.com. The code is stew10. You'll save 10%. See you tomorrow.